Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss understanding producer surplus and this is actually the quick version of the video. I do have a longer, more detailed version, but most people prefer quick, so here it goes. I'll link to the other one in the description anyway. All right, so producer surplus is our way of measuring how well producers are doing and we often use the measure to compare market scenarios or to evaluate the effect of a market intervention on producers. And how we measure producer surplus is we take the difference between the price that the producer sells their good at, that's P, and the marginal cost of production, which is abbreviated MC, for each unit that the producer sells. Now, the approach as a measure of welfare or well-being is pretty intuitive. So if I were a producer selling coffee, for instance, and the marginal cost of one cup of coffee was $2.50, but I was able to sell that coffee for $5, that would be really good for me because the price is higher than the cost of production. So economists say that I get an additional surplus, producer surplus or PS of, well, five, that's the price, minus $2.50, that's the cost of production, equal to $2.50, that's the producer surplus for that unit. If we make more than one unit, we add up over all the units produced. So let's look here at the table on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. So let's say I make and sell ovens. I sell three ovens for $200 each. Now in the table, I can see that the marginal cost of each oven is, well, for the first it's 100, for the second it's 120, and for the third it's 140. I can find the producer surplus just by finding price minus marginal cost for each of these units and then adding those differences up. So just in that last column, we're going to find P minus MC. For that first unit, it's well 200 minus 100, so 100. For the second unit, it's 200 minus 120, so 80. For the third unit, it's 200 minus 140, so 60. The total producer surplus then would be the sum of these differences, so 100 plus 80 plus 60, which is 240. Now, we might also have examples like this one on the bottom right hand side of the screen, where we have a supply curve and we see the price is 50 in this case and the quantity supplied at that price is equal to 50. Now, here we just have to realize that our supply curve well, it tells us about the minimum price that suppliers need to be incentivized to produce some quantity and that that minimum price is just the cost of production, i.e. it's the marginal cost. So we can find our producer surplus in these scenarios using our supply curve because our supply curve essentially tells us about the marginal cost of production for each unit. So, for instance, if we had any quantity, say Q1, well, the marginal cost of producing Q1 would just be equal to the height of the supply curve at that quantity. Now, if we sold this quantity for, say, $50, as in this example, then price minus marginal cost, which is what we need for a producer surplus, is just the difference between the price line and the height of that supply curve. So that's P minus MC for that quantity, but when we have these sorts of examples where we have supply functions, we need to take this difference for all of the quantities produced. So that's up to Q is equal to 50 in this case. And this amounts to taking the area underneath the price above the supply curve. So getting the difference between the price and the supply curve for all of those units just over those quantities that we're producing. So up to Q is equal to 50 in this case. And this is going to work as a general rule in order to find our producer surplus. When we have supply functions like this, we take the area below price above supply over those quantities supplied and that's our producer surplus. Now in this case, our producer surplus is just the area of a triangle. So we can find it by just using half times base times height and that's half times our base can be 50. Our height will be 50 minus 10, so 40, so equal to 1000. All right, so now that is a quick version of explaining producer surplus. I do have another video which is more detailed and has um, kind of more elaborate practice problems. It is probably too long. I think this one's a better one, but I'll link to it below just in case you do want to see the extended version. Uh, I hope that it helped and I hope you guys are doing really well.